So guys, I hope you are all doing really, really well. In this video, what I wanna be going through is how to master e-com sales, right? Because obviously there's a lot, of, um, a lot of videos out there how to get clients, how to do service delivery. I know myself, my last few videos have been heavily tailored towards that. Um, but I wanna talk about how to, as I say, how to become just really, really efficient and effective at sales. So you know that it will only take you, you know, maybe three, four, five calls to get a client consistently, or maybe even two, um, two calls to get a client, etc., etc. okay? Knowing those numbers is super important, and obviously, in order to get um, efficient at it, you need to get better at it. So as I say in this video, I wanna cover how to become a master at e-commerce sales. So just before we jump into it, as always, guys, make sure you go ahead, smash the like button, and subscribe to the channel. Massively, massively helps out with the YouTube algorithm. So go ahead, smash the like button, and subscribe to the channel. So once again, I have got my computer here. We're gonna be going through some slides. It seems as though you guys really, really like this style of video, a bit more in-depth, a bit more um, informative as well. So with that being said, let's uh, let's jump straight into it. So becoming a master at e-commerce sales. First things first, let's look at the, let's have a look at the skeleton of sales, right? Because obviously in order to become effective at really anything, you need to understand it to its it, to its core level, right? You need to really, really understand it and get, um, you know, just have a good grasp on it, right? And so, as I say, I wanna look at the skeleton of sales because for me, really, there's two things that are kind of just, if you don't hit these two things, then obviously there's always exceptions to the rule, but if you don't hit these two things, it's gonna be very, very hard for you to actually go ahead and sell, even if every single other part of your sales process is perfect. If you don't have these two things in place, it's just gonna make it very, very difficult. So you need to, well, yeah, like, let's just jump straight into it. I'm not gonna ramble on like I always do. So perceived value is, you know, the perceived value needs to be um, higher than the price. So the only way you will ever sell anyone anything is by making the perceived value of the product slash service seem higher than the price you are charging. Okay, so if you try and sell someone something for $10,000, but they truly, truly believe that the value of that product slash service is only $5,000, you know, they're, they're never gonna buy it, right? It's very basic, they're never ever gonna buy it. And so the way that we do this with, within e-com sales is by showing the client that the results you will be able to generate them will far outweigh the service fee and make and you know and almost make that service fee seem insignificant in comparison you know to the to the results that you'll be generating them. So it's just logical, but I feel as though it's sometimes it, it's something that sometimes people overlook. So as I say, you know. If you, you're selling something for $10,000, but the, the, the recipient, the, you know, the, the prospect, the, the potential client, the lead, whatever, only thinks that the, that the actual value of that service is $5,000, but you're selling it at 10,000, like they're never gonna buy. And this is what I was talking about before, like it really doesn't matter how good the rest of your sales process is, how good you speak or how good you structure I don't know you, know, you know, the entire process as a whole or anything like that, that really doesn't matter at that point if they think that the perceived value is lower than the price. However, as I say, to become just ruthlessly effective at sales, you need to always ensure that the perceived value seems higher than the price. So let's flip the script, okay? So let's say you're selling that same $10,000 product, but you've gone about making the perceived value of your um, of that specific product or service, in this case, you know, with a with an e-com SMMA, with that service, you're selling at the same price point, but only this time you make the perceived value of it 25,000. So they're essentially buying something that is worth 25,000, but only for $10,000. And so at that point, it's a no-brainer. It's like, I mean, would you pay me 10,000 if I was to give you 25,000 back? It's like, of course. And so that's what you need to be making sure that you're hitting every single discovery call, every single sales meeting, you need to make sure that you're hitting that in terms of making, your, making the perceived value of your service seem higher than the price that you're asking. And as I say there, you know, a really, really good way to do that is by, um, well, really the only way to do that is by ensuring that you show them that the results that they'll get in return will far outweigh that price that you're charging. So then that's where the perceived value comes in, right? Because they'll be paying you 5,000 a month service fee, for example, um, but every month you'll be able to generate them 20, 25, 30, 50, 100,000 a month. So it's like, it's, it's just a no brainer at that point. And as I say, I know it's very basic. I know it's very logical. And probably the majority of you guys know about it, but it's something that you really need to just make sure that you're continuously thinking about because it's really, 
serves as the skeleton of sales, okay? So let's jump straight back into it. Now, the second thing, okay, so that's the first thing that I truly believe that you need to have in place in order to be successful at sales. The second thing is something that's called the bridge. Now, this isn't a, um, a revolutionary term or anything like that. You know, this is used throughout all of SMMA and really just throughout all of sales, but it's super important once again to understand because, uh, you know, as I go on to say, the second super important concept to understand about being effective at sales is by making it crystal clear to the e-com owner that you and your agency are the only bridge between where they currently are to where they wanna to get to. As soon as the prospect understands this, it will make it very, very hard for them to walk away from you. Okay, so if you just make it blatantly obvious to the to the client, to the, the to, um, to the potential client, to the prospect, whatever you want to call it, you make it blatantly obvious to them that you and your agency are the only bridge, right? You, you like if they go anywhere else, they're not going to get that bridge, right? They may get the bridge halfway, but they're not going to get it the full way to their goal, okay? Um, if you make it, as I say, if you make it blatantly obvious to the prospect that you and your agency are the only bridge to get them to their goal, it will, you know, it's obviously going to help in, in um, converting them, but it's what it's going to do more so is it's going to make it very hard for them to walk away. Obviously, it ties in with converting them anyway, but that's really where this point comes into play is it makes it very, very hard for them to walk away because it's like them almost walking away from a golden ticket to their goal, if you can position it in that way. Okay, so it's very, very hard for them to walk away. And obviously, if they uh, don't walk away, then you should have uh, signed them on as a client, okay? And so they're like, obviously, it, you know, it goes a lot more in depth, but they are two very, very important kind of underlying foundations that you need to understand about sales. If you don't have these two things in place, as I say, uh, you know, as I said before, it doesn't matter how good the rest of your sales process is, how good you, um, how, you know how cheap you make the the the, um, the service, how good you speak on the like it just doesn't matter, right? If these two things aren't in place, you'll never uh, you'll never be able to sign a client, or you may, but it's just going to be very very hard, and your meeting uh, to client conversion rate will be not the best. Okay, so let's continue. Identically opposite. Okay, identically opposite. This is something that. I focus a large um, proportion on in the quantum agency program. There's a big proportion of that program, of the sales week in that program that focuses on this idea because it's so important. It's a very, very important concept that you must um, kind of understand and conceptualize, okay? So you must understand that although every sales situation is identical, it's also polar opposite. So what I mean by this is that for every sales situation, you know, you go through the exact same process, um, same process meaning the same sales process. So, you know, um, from the start, then you transition into this point and then this point and then you transition to the close, right? That sales pro um, process is identical for all discovery calls that you have. And as well as that, you know, in, con in conjunction to that, often prospects will have somewhat the same objections as well, right? So you're gonna be handling somewhat the same objections majority of the time. So you can see that for the most part, sales is identically opposite, um, is identical, okay? Now, at the same time, it's also drastically different in that prospects value different things. And so you never ever want to be overly scripted as this could massively hinder your success. Okay, so as I say, it, it's identical in that the, the almost the quote unquote step by step process that you go through with every client, it's exactly the same, right? You start off, break the ice, build some rapport, then you move into like that kind of like phase one, at least we call it phase one in the quantum agency program. Then we go through phase one, through phase six, all the way through to so one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we can then start looking at transitioning into the close, right? So every sales, situation is identical in in terms of that right the process and you'll probably have the same somewhat the same objections you know you, you've probably got maybe anywhere between like five to ten objections that just clients just consistently filter through um, different clients would use different ones but it's, it's, it's essentially five to ten objections that you always always encounter so it's pretty much identical however it's also polar opposite in that different prospects value different things Right? And this really goes for the population. Everybody values different things. And 
Here's what I mean by that in a lot more detail. And I think once I explain this, you'll really, really be able to understand why this is such an important concept to understand and start to actually implement it to yourself. So let's get into it. So as I say, here's what I mean. So some prospects that you will have a discovery call with, okay, will really value a high ROAS, right? And these are all examples. Um, these are just arbitrary things that I just kind of came up with, but it's actual life as well, you know, Genuinely, you will have discovery calls with people who value a high ROAS and value a, um, a consistent stream of income month in, month out. Now, on the flip side, conversely, you will also have discovery calls with prospects who really value communication with their service providers, for example. You know, people value, you know, you may have a prospect who just really values communication, just really values. Um, the, the, the idea of them being able to message you as a service provider for their business, they, they, can, they know that they can message you and within 24 hours or you know maybe even 12 hours every single time, either yourself or your team member is gonna get back to them with, their, with an answer or with um, you know, the solution to whatever they want or whatever, you know, that type of communication some people may really value. On the flip side, other people may really value high ROAS and just a consistent stream of income. However you get it, they don't really care. They just wanna see ROAS, which is obviously return on ad spend, and just month in, month out, knowing that they're gonna make 50,000 this month, or 100, or 150, or whatever, okay? Now, this is where it comes, um, you know, this kind of whole concept really, really kind of becomes effective, okay? So as I say, now, let's say that you are on a call with one of these prospects who values communication, right? You're on a call with a prospect who actually really values communication, but you're overly scripted and you try and sell your service to this prospect based on the ROAS it can generate. In this case, the prospect will simply just not see any value within your service. That's it. At the end of the day, that you know, if you sell your, you know, if you sell your um, service to a prospect who really, really values communication, but you sell it to them and you position your service in a way of it being able to produce a really high ROAS, the prospect will just not see any value in your service. So they won't buy because they don't see any value. And this actually ties in with um, perceived value. Um, needs to be seen as higher than the actual price you're charging. And so if, you know, you can see this kind of play out now. And so if you sell your service to a prospect who values communication, but you sell your service based on ROAS, they won't see any value in it. So then they will instantly see the perceived value of your service as lower than the price you're charging. And as I said before at the start of the video, if, they, if this happens, you know, if they think that the perceived value of your service is lower than the price you're charging, you're never, ever, ever gonna sell anyone because they're not, nobody's gonna spend um, 10,000 to get 5,000 back. It's just logically stupid. So this is where this ties in. Okay, and so as I'm going to say there, conversely though, if you understood that they value communication and then you sell your service based around this, even though you're selling the exact same thing, they will see immense value within your service. So if you, you know, it's the exact same service, nothing's changed. However, you weren't overly scripted and rather, you, and we're gonna get into listening on the next slide, but you kind of, you know, um, you weren't overly scripted and you listened to what they were saying and you realized that they value communication. And then nearer to the end, when it comes to closing the prospect and whatnot, you then go ahead and position your service around communication rather than around good ROAS, you will be able to convert almost anybody because the perceived value that they will have of your service will simply be higher um, than the price you're charging and so that's when they buy. Okay, I hope that makes sense. I hope you can just see the importance of this um, because as I say, especially for those of you in the quantum agency program, obviously you guys have got that entire script, that e-commerce specific script that, um, you know, it allows for all of this you know, we've got contingencies and whatnot, so you get the word for word script, so just go ahead and use that script, because trust me, it is honestly so powerful and it encompasses all of this, right? So you don't need to think about um, how to, kind of, as I say, how to in, um, include this type of stuff into your script. Just go ahead, use that script. It's honestly one of the best scripts for e-commerce, um, because as I say, it um, allows you to incorporate all of this type of stuff, so it allows you to position your service at the end, Based on uh, based on exactly what the client values, so then you know your conversion rate just shoots through the roof. Okay, so let's get back into it. As I say, though, I hope that makes sense. 
I hope you can see how, what I'm trying to get out there and see, as I said before, how powerful it is to position your service based around what the client values themselves, not based around just what it says in your script because you're overly scripted, okay? So as I say, let's get back into it. As I was touching on before, you want to listen to your, listen to your prospect, okay? Because listening is better than speaking. And so this ties in directly with the previous point of not being overly scripted. Just because you have a script in front of you doesn't mean that you cannot say something quote unquote off script, right? Just because your script says, um, say X, Y, and Z doesn't mean to say that you can't say something outside of X, Y, and Z, okay? So listening to your prospect is vital because this is the only way that you will be able to understand where their values lie and it will massively help you position your service correctly for the ultimate conversion, okay? Now, let's have a look at crafting your script. So, when crafting your script, you need to allow for these, for these contingencies to be played out. Don't create a script where it's based on word by word, line by line, rather create it in a way that has different paths that you can go down to ensure that you always position your service in the best possible way for the specific client that you are on the discovery call with. Okay, and as a side note guys, I shouldn't need to say this, but I wanna just make sure that I do say this. Never say that your service can do a certain thing if it can't just because that's what the client values, okay? Always be truthful in your meetings. So, you know, I'm saying all of this, but you want to make sure that you position your service in a way that suits the client's values as long as your service actually does that. You know what I mean? Like, for example, with communication and high ROAS, your, your service should, especially for those of you, for those of you in the quantum agency program, your service will be able to produce a high ROAS and you've also got really, really good communication. So you can almost alter the way that you position your service because you know you've got different um, you've got different perks to your service. Okay. However, if the, you know, for example, I mean this is obviously logical again, but if for the for example, the clients really values maybe Google Ads, for example, and then you position your entire service around Google Ads, but you don't actually do Google Ads, you only do Facebook Ads. Something like that, just obviously don't do that. That's just, um, that's just kind of logic. <laughs> um, and that's just being truthful. That's what it comes down to at the end of the day. However, let's look at cra uh, crafting your script for quickly. So as I said, you want to make sure that you build out your script around allowing for these contingencies to be played out. So what I mean by that is, you know, don't create it word by word, line by line, and it's just like this, 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 then say this, then say this, then say that, right? You wanna allow things like, if they say this, then go down this route. If they do this, go down this route. Um, are they running Facebook ads? Are they not? Because then, you know, if they're running Facebook ads, then they're gonna value different things than somebody who, or you're gonna to have to sell them in a different way to somebody who isn't running Facebook ads, et cetera, et cetera. Again, for those of you in the Quantum Agency program, just go ahead and leverage the script in the sales week. That allows for all of this. And as I said before, it's one of, if not the best e-commerce script out there because as I said, it allows for you to sell and position your service based on what the specific client values. So. It's, as I said in our previous video, like if you use that script, it's almost impossible for you to not sell a client as long as they're qualified and they can actually move forward with you. There's no logistical objections, there's no um, you know, tight money, because obviously then that will result in them not being qualified. However, as I say, um, just start implementing this type of um, you know, sales into your discovery calls because I can guarantee you that it's a surefire way to increase the conversion rate of your meetings. It's a surefire way because as I say, I mean, you just ask yourself, ask yourself this, if you was to go, I don't know, a good example, um, let's say you had a business and you, you know, a service provider reached out to you, right? Let's flip the script. So you had a business, service provider reached out to you and there was this, just this one problem slash, you know, there was this one problem that you consistently had, right? And you really, really value something, right? And in terms of the solution to that problem is the thing that you really, really value, okay? So the solution to that main, main problem that you have, the solution is something that you value. And then you hop on a call with a service provider who just hits every single point that you've been wanting to hit. They've hit every single point, right? And um, they position their service in a way that literally fuels your values and it fuels the problem 
as the, you know, if, sorry, it fuels the solution to the problem. So you know that if you bring them on board, your problem will be fixed, your values will be met, and you'll be able to scale your business to wherever it is that you personally want to take it to. And then they go ahead and say that their price is $5,000 and you went, uh, or, or, you know, you were qualified, so you had maybe 100,000 in the bank or you were making 100,000 a month or whatever it is. At that point, it's like, there's no log there's no way you would leave that meeting without signing on with the client, without signing on with that service provider. There's just no way because everything is perfect. So that's what you need to do for your clients, okay? And the way that you do that is by implementing these um, ideas and uh, concepts into your discovery calls and building out your script in this way. As I say, for those of you in the Quantum Agency program, just go ahead, service delivery week, um, and you have the entire script there. As I say, it's just a ridiculously powerful script that will literally convert anyone and everyone as long as they're qualified and they can genuinely move forward with you. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it brought some more context around how to master e-com sales um, and how you, and, and you know, I also hope it gave you some tangible things, some practical things that you can actually go ahead and start implementing into your discovery calls, into your meetings and see your conversion rate rise. So as I say, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video.